Good morning. Ooh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I am I am full this morning, man. I am full this morning. The gospel is being preached around this world. And um, you know, this next generation is getting a hold of it. And I'm just full, man. I'm full. You know, people are giving God praise for his favor, knowing that it's not common, knowing that it's undeserved, uncommon favor. I'm full, man. I, I'm so full. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace is being preached. And uh, whew, I just I want to rejoice. I want to rejoice. God is so, so good. I want to rejoice. He is good and he's worthy to be praised. And um, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God is so good. Wow. Woo. I'm, I'm, we ain't even got started yet. And I'm already, I'm already about to shout. I'm just full. Oh my goodness. God is so good. And he's so worthy to be praised. Anyway, welcome to the Grace Gang. <laughs> you know how sometimes somebody singing or preaching and they fall out and forget about, you know, thousands of people are waiting on them to talk. And that's what I just felt like. It's like that. I'm just, whoo. When I think about the goodness of the Lord, and I just think about how good he is. And, uh, oh, my God, I'm just, I'm so Ooh, I'm so grateful, so thankful. So I don't know if you know what I'm I'm talking about. Uh, it's just like, you know, in the presence of God, you just you just it doesn't take but a moment for you to get so full and and God just breathes on you. And I'm sure there are a lot of you who think you know, maybe what you're doing is a waste of time. And who cares? And is anybody hearing you or being ministered by you? And dude, I'm telling you, don't you stop doing what God called you to do. You have no idea how many lives are being impacted by your simple obedience to do and to say what God tells you to do and say. Oh, and he's so good. He's so good, man. And there is going to be a tsunami of favor to hit this planet. It's already started. And uh, Jesus came to this earth wrapped up in grace and truth. And uh, I'm telling you, man, I'm living a grace life. That's why we had those conferences, man, to teach people yearly on how to live the grace life and uh man i tell you what so don't you quit don't you stop doing what god told you to do somebody's life could depend on you doing what god told you to do so you keep doing what god told you to do you keep it moving bro you keep it going um whoever god meant to be impacted by your anointing your life your ministry um your transparency um they're gonna be impacted so please don't stop please don't stop welcome to the grace gang this morning started off a little unusual because i'm you know trying to hold back tears i'm so happy that lives are changing and people are getting it and lives are changing and you know, people keep talking about, oh, I don't know what's happened to this next generation. I'm going to tell you something. This next generation is is big time. And I'm so glad God's got me teaching uh, in the future, you know, if that makes sense. And and I'm, I'm like, man, I mean, these kids, these teenagers, these these people are understanding the word. These people in their 30s and 40s are getting a hold of the gospel of grace. And God is able to come in and rearrange their life and change their life. And we're learning how to believe right. And when you believe right, you can live right. 
and we're not putting so much focus on struggling to try to live right but what our focus is on we believe jesus and jesus is taking care of all of the things that need to be taken care of Woo, man you're talking about somebody wanting to just tear something up just like man just out of happiness and joy oh my god uh don't you quit you hear me that's the word for you this monday do not quit what god told you to do and you know don't let him start talking in your head. Oh, you don't make no difference or you ain't you ain't ain't nobody paying no attention to what you're doing, what you're saying. Don't you don't you quit, bro. You don't even understand how many lies you won't know. This is what God told me. He says you will not know the number of people you've impacted until you get to heaven. And I'm telling you the same thing right now. You won't you won't even know the number of people that you impacted. And it's not always when you opened your mouth. Sometimes somebody was watching you. And your life as a living epistle um, made the difference in somebody else's life. And uh, so no quitting, no quitting today, tomorrow. Let's keep let's keep moving on, man. This thing, you know, I trust God and I trust that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. I trust that God's going to put a mission on your life. He's going to put something on your heart to do. And you're going to know how to do it. Praise the Lord. And, um, you know, I, I just, you know, God told me to teach the gospel and be consistent about it. And I'm telling you, you, you get that word from God. It, it's okay, let me say something. See if you can hear what I'm saying here. Um, if you'll notice uh, in the Bible, uh, even before the, the, the age of grace. Most of the breakthrough took place because somebody got a word from God. God, God gave a word to somebody. And I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that we have the word of God now, you know, in the old covenant, they didn't have the word of God. They had a, uh, uh, the law, which was God's character, his perfection. That was too perfect for us to keep. Uh, but without it, we would have never known Jesus. But thank God for the word of God. But I, I believe that the word of God positions you to receive a word from God. In other words, I believe that every behind every written word is a word from God. And that word from God, is, it, it, it goes something like this. It's like, I need you to do this. You know, a word from God, Moses, I need you to go back to Israel and I need you to go to Pharaoh and I need you to say this. You know, God is still giving a word from God. And what I am saying is, as you fellowship with God and as you operate in an intimate relationship with God and as you spend time with him because you want to spend time with him, then what happens as you live your life, God's fellowshipping with you. So he's going to you're going to get a word from God. Now, now listen to me. When you get a word from God, breakthrough happens because you get a word from God as a result of you being in the word of God, as a result of you living out the word of God. And I tell you, everybody I see in the Bible that got a word from God, breakthrough came because they got a word from God. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And so I'm going to believe right now for all of you that as you start seeking God and as you start fellowshipping with God and as you start reading his word and meditating his word and delighting yourself in the word of God. That while you're just minding your own business because you're hungry for God and you're thirsty for God, he's going to say something to you specifically and you're going to get a word from God. You're going to hear it in your spirit. Glory to God. And when you hear it in your spirit and then activate it, breakthrough is going to come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Breakthrough is going to come. You're going to get a word from God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go and declare that right now. A word from God. See, a lot of times we try to do things to make the breakthrough come. And, you know, we don't deserve to get a word from God. We don't deserve for God to speak to us like he spoke to Moses. But I'm telling you, because of his grace and mercy, he going to speak to you. 
and you're going to know it. You ain't got to go and try to figure out what was that. You will know it. You will know it. You will know it. Honey, when God tells you to go and start a business and you heard that from God and when somebody says why you did it, you say, I got a word from God, that thing going to work. I do not believe that breakthrough can be kept back from a person who gets a rhema. That's what it's called, a rhema, a spoken word from God, spoken in your spirit. You're sitting there reading a the written word and behind that written word, you hear a spoken word from God. You on your way to work praising the Lord and at a, at a stop sign, you hear a spoken word from God. I remember when I was praying, you know, trying to get anointed and I got choked up with the carpet fibers and the rhema word came to me and said, son, I anointed you when I called you. Son, you don't have to try to get something. You already got it. My God, I'm telling you, it changed my whole life. And sometimes the rhema word might just simply be something that just lifts you up so high. He might... He, you, you might read about love in the Bible, but boy, when God whispers, you know, I love you. Whoa, you're empowered. And I believe that there is going to be great empowerment that is released upon uh, the body of Christ that says you're now up into time. You've been growing in me. You've been worshiping me and you've been reading my word you've been meditating my word you've been studying my word you've been joining the grace gang and getting fed my word he says i'm about to give you a rhema i'm about to say something to you to shake your world my god i'm about to say something to you that's going to shake you loose from your your tormentors it's going to shake you loose from burdens and yoke i'm going to shake you loose with a rhema word glory be to god Woo. My, 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 my. I, I feel like shouting this morning, Grace Gang. I'm telling you, I, I tell you when th there's, you know, you don't you don't work to try to get a breakthrough. Honey, that breakthrough comes supernaturally with that rhema. And if you trust God enough and depend on God enough and just do what he tell you to do. Now, sometimes people think as they carry out that spoken word that it will you'll be carrying it out with no resistance are you kidding me satan gonna try to come against you with everything that's what he tries to do he comes to kill steal and destroy he wants to listen he's not gonna roll out a red carpet for you to carry out what god spoke to you but i'm telling you in the name of jesus he will not be able to stop a man or a woman of god who has heard from god you're almost invincible. Grobo shata. Y'all, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm. When, you, when you get a word from God, you, along with the word is the ability to carry it out. Along with the word is the ability to, to see it manifest. Glory to God. And it's like, yeah, the devil going to try, but you're, when you're fueled with that rhema word, I don't care what he try to do. That rhema word is like an empowerment that shields you, strengthens you, accompanies you. And that's why I'm talking about a, a personal relationship with God, not a religious relationship where we know how to act in church and we know how to shout. We know when to say amen. I'm talking about power real power power is the ability to get the job done and i'm telling you when you lean and depend on him and you lean and depend on the grace of god hallelujah you're gonna walk in uncommon favor Maraha, you're gonna walk in favor Woo, glory to god that people gonna be thinking where did that happen how did you do that and you'll know no man I'm, I'm just walking in the grace that god has released into my life when he spoke to me and told me to do this sometimes god will tell you to to be a certain place we had several people last year at grace life conference god told them they were from a, another part of the world you need to be at that conference you need to get there at that comfort. Then they got there and breakthrough comes. I, I've said it like this, and I don't know if many people really understood what I said, but I said it like this. 
breakthrough doesn't come just from the written word, but it comes from the spoken word. Uh, the difference is when, when you get a rhema word or the spoken word, let me make sure you understand rhema is a word that describes that spoken word that God speaks directly to your spirit. But the logos word is the written word that you open your Bible and you read glory be to God. And of course, we want to begin to line our lives up with the rhema word and the written word. Absolutely. But now I'm putting you on notice. God is about to speak into your spirit. <clears throat> He's about to speak into your life. And you're going to see the difference when, when you're doing something that God has told you to do, rather than just coming up with a, a bunch of busy stuff to do to try to get God to do something. Oh, my goodness. We call those dead works trying to deserve something from God. And uh, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So I, I say you're blessed today. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I am stirred up big time. I'm stirred up big time today. And so now in the middle of this and some people don't know what's getting ready to hit. We, we talk about the bad stuff that's getting ready to hit. And, you know, that stuff's going to happen. But you forgot about when sin abounds, grace does much more abound. So whatever crazy getting ready to happen, there's going to be an increase of the grace of God showing up. And I tell you the truth, there will be a move of God. Uncommon. Things that people, they didn't see how it was going to come. But it's happening right now. Happening right now. I just believe that some of y'all are going to have an awesome day, an awesome week. Something good is going to happen to you. My God, did you feel that? Something good is going to happen to you. And uh, it won't be because of you. It'll be because of Jesus. It'll be because of that grace and that mercy. So you shake off the depression, shake off the woe is me. Stay away from self-pity. Make sure you know where pride and ego is sitting. And, and just say, you know, Jesus, I want more of you. Maybe, maybe you want, maybe you prayed already, but maybe, maybe something happening right now where you're like, hey, I'm gonna spend some time with God today. I just want to spend some time with him. I just want to give him praise. I just want to, I just want to love on him, praise God. I, I want to because I want to. I ain't trying to get nothing from it. I just want to. His presence is awesome, his grace is amazing. His mercy is, 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 is from everlasting to everlasting. Who wouldn't want to spend time with somebody like this? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help me, Lord Jesus. So I don't knock these devices off the table. I am, I am, you know, when you're just certain about something, when you sense, I sense, and that's how God deals with me. I sense things in the spirit. I sense in the spirit. Mola bashata. That your best days are not behind you. Your best days are in front of you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I pray that an anointing go through these platforms right now, right where you are. This anointing, wherever you might be on a ship an airplane, a boat, in your house, at the bathroom, at your job. I pray this anointing come on you. There is no time nor distance in the spirit and that a supernatural occurrence will take place in your life today, this week, and you will know that was God. You'll know that was God. God's doing some amazing things. And, uh, woo! Yellow. So let, let me give you this real quick. I wanted to talk to you about it. We're Psalms 91 equipped. I'm going to declare that over you this morning. I declare that you are Psalms 91 equipped and you just say, I receive it. I receive it right now. I receive that I'm Psalms 91 equipped. Now, here's what the enemy is going to try to do. In the midst of all of this stuff that I sense is getting ready to happen, he's going to keep trying to use the weapon of condemnation. 
He going to keep trying to make you feel guilty. He going to keep trying to make you feel uh, ashamed. He's going to keep trying to make you feel unfit. He's going to he, he going to keep trying to do that to you because that is the root to fear. And if he can get you to fear, then, you know, it's kind of like faith. Fear is the faith of the devil. And he's going to try to bring that on your life so he can bring stress in your life so he can bring of the manifestation of the curse in your life. It's it's the same old trip. He he doesn't have too many files to go against you. So it keeps going back to the same file. So he's going to keep going back to that file of condemnation. All right. So now Jesus has already set us free. Like I said last week, he's already set us free from the condemnation based on what we do. We're free from that. All we got to do is believe it. Okay. But now there's a condemnation that comes to people who don't even believe Jesus. Okay. And when you don't believe Jesus, you're condemned already. And then yesterday we asked the question, you know, you know, are is our believers not believing? So the whole point is the Holy Spirit wants to deal with our sins by dealing with our unbelief. So I wanted to talk about four things real quick. I gave them yesterday, but I felt like spending a little bit more time in them. Four signs that you are living in condemnation so you can get out of it. Get out of it. You cannot you cannot stay in condemnation because the enemy is going to use condemnation to try to impact your faith in the grace of God. OK, so don't let that happen. Get rid of the guilt. Get rid of the condemnation. Get rid of the shame. How do I do that? I believe in Jesus. I depend on him. So, number one, we said this yesterday. The, the first sign that you're in condemnation is you think about the past a lot. You think about the past a lot. And Philippians uh, thir Philippians 3 verse 13 says that this one thing I do, I forget about the things that are behind me and I reach to the things that are before me. Now, if you want a really in-depth teaching on this, go and listen to, to yesterday's sermon. But here's a sign that you're in condemnation. You, 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 you're thinking about the past a lot. The word of the Lord came to our church yesterday and said that it's time for us to hit reset, not regret. And Satan wants you to just stay in that place of regret when you need to hit reset. OK, so, yeah, yeah, we all did some crazy things in the past, but we're born again and Jesus has taken care of that. And so get out the past. All right. So get out the past and you weaken condemnation. All right. Get out the past because you believe that Jesus has died for your past, present and future sins. Get out the past. OK, it's reset. Go ahead and reset your life and, and don't let the past cause you to just live in regret. All right. So that's number one. All right, Philippians 3.13, I, this, I forget about the things that are behind. You got to go forward now. The greatest, I mean, Satan wants to just keep you back. Keep it. You remember what you did. Look at what you did. Can't believe you did that. Da, 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 da. You got to go. You got to keep this thing moving. You ain't got time to go back no 20 years ago and then let 20 years ago cause you to be paralyzed today. All right. All right, number two. Here's a, another sign that you're in condemnation. You struggle trying to forgive yourself. You struggle trying to forgive yourself. You know, that has a lot to do with the past, right? You struggle trying to forgive yourself. Listen, God has already forgiven you. So you need to go and forgive yourself. If God has already forgiven you and he has, then you need you might as well go ahead and forgive yourself since he's already forgiven you. Think about how, how crazy that is. You're still not forgiving yourself and God has already forgiven you. Well, I just can't forgive myself because I can't believe I did that. Well, God forgave you. So you need to learn how to forgive yourself like rat now, R-A-T, quick as a rat. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You got to start believing that all things have become new and you got to quit holding on to the other stuff. You got to quit holding on to the old thing. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. All right. Forgive yourself. Okay. That was the old you doing old stupid stuff. Forgive yourself. Yeah. But you know, I'm trying to try is an honest lie. Do it. 
when you do that, you weaken condemnation's effect in your life. All right. You weaken it. All right. Yeah. I like what somebody just said. The apostle Paul said, I have wronged no man. I've defrauded no man. Um, and he made his mind up that, uh, you know, I, 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 Paul knew he did and he knew he wronged a lot of people. You know, he defrauded a lot of people. He know he did, but he ain't back there no more. He's not back there anymore. You can read the Bible and look at all things Paul did. And then he comes up and says, I have wronged no man. I have defrauded no man. I have not done all these things. How do you do that? Because I believe Jesus. And I'm not going to stand the past. I'm not going to do it. Number three. Here's the third thing that keeps people in the condemnation. You have a judgmental and a critical spirit. You have a judgmental and a critical spirit. Wow. I used uh, yesterday Matthew 7 and, and 2 in the TPT. <sighs> What's the real reason behind this judgmental and critical spirit? Why are you critical of, of everybody? Why are you judgmental of everybody? You know what? How you treat yourself is how you're treating other people. When you treat other people mean, it's because you treat yourself mean. And as, as a Christian people that walk by faith and walk in the word of God, I, I'm not going to be judgmental of people. It, it's, it's just not the thing to do. It, it keeps you in condemnation. It's a condemned man that has no problem always judging other people. Uh, and, and right now, the body of Christ is we ripping, we ripping one another apart on judging other people we nobody has any room to judge anybody i believe everybody got enough to work on on their own without paying attention and being busy bodies getting in somebody else's business it just we don't need to do that um yeah it's like you know just not lest you be judged maybe you've been judged so now you're continuing to judge other people and being critical of everything and everybody Part of that is jealousy. Part of that is envy. Just always critical of everybody. When the Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice. All of that comes from condemnation. Judgmental spirit and that condemnation, that the judgment of spirit and critical spirit, it, it, it comes from the root of condemnation, which produce fear. And then out of fear, you're you're judging and, and, um, and being critical of somebody else. Whew. And the world's looking at us do that. They're looking at us judging, being critical of one another. And it's it's it you will you will greatly cripple condemnation when you make your mind up that I'm I'm not gonna be jealous or envious or critical of anybody. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just not gonna do it. Whether something's true or not, I'm I'm just not gonna do it. Because, you know. You know, God didn't tell me to be critical and judgmental of somebody. He told me to pray for people. And, you know, I'm just not even if it's true. I used to think, well, well, it's it's fine if it's true, if it's true. <laughs> and my wife kept like, no, it ain't, you know, because I'm thinking I was dealing with complaining. And I said, I, I can come. It, it ain't complaining because it is true. <laughs> and she said, yeah, it is. She said, you're still expressing your disapproval. And your frustration with something, you're, that's complaining. And and I tell you what, when you start spiritually maturing and emotionally maturing, you start looking at these things a lot more in depth, you know. And uh, it's like everybody got something in their life that they need to go ahead and judge themselves on. OK, and just go ahead and judge yourself on it. And then nobody will judge you on it. But, you know, you understand the world doing that, but not people that are in the same body people who you know it's just like my hand slapping my face all the time uh so we we don't want to do that okay and then finally and this is a big one romans chapter five and eight you feel unworthy if you find yourself feeling unworthy most likely you're dealing with condemnation because god has made you his beloved and he has he has absolutely made it clear that you are worthy. You're worthy of his son. You're worthy of the blood that he shed. You're, you're worthy of the, 
the right to use the name of Jesus, you are absolutely worthy. And I don't know what it is. Sometimes we let the devil just talk us out of out of work, out of knowing that we're worthy. But how does he do that through condemnation? I feel guilty. I feel shameful. I just don't feel like I'm enough. I just don't feel like I'm enough. I just don't feel like I'm enough. And and, you know, that easily translates into I don't feel worthy. And that's what condemnation is all about. Ultimately, to get you to the place where you say, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy of God's love or anybody else's love. I don't feel worthy of God blessing me or anybody else doing something for me. And you're just you're just handing your life over to Satan on a silver platter. And it is going to have to be by faith and you're going to have to have courage to stand up and say, I'm enough. I'm worthy. I am God's beloved. And I am free from from condemnation. And I believe God. And when you do that, condemnation is so crippled because most of condemnation takes place in your mind and your soul. It's the stuff he can say to you to try to condemn you. It's the stuff he can say to you to try to get you to feel like you're not worthy and like you ain't worth nothing. But I'm telling you, you are. You are because you're born again and you are sons and daughters of the most high God. And he loves you and he created you in his image. You are enough. You are worthy. You believe in him. Therefore, there'll be no more shame, no more guilt. Praise God. Amen. So, hey, guys, it was it was good this morning. I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be a good day today. Good day today. Good day today. Good day today. In the name of Jesus, we send prayers out to you know, people that are being attacked in their body. I sense that right now. Um, somebody, if you're if they're being attacked in their body, you know people that are being attacked in their body. Let's let's agree right now. Let's release the power of the Holy Spirit to set free, to heal, to rescue, to do the things that need to be done. You got to understand the enemy. Ultimately, what he wants to do is just get you out of the way. And we have power and authority over him. He just wants to get you out of the way. And um, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So we pray for people who are under attack. We pray for those people you know that are in ICU. Uh, emergency situations happen. And I just pray. I, I rebuke the, the, the devil. I rebuke death. And I declare that they will live and not die. Whoever, whoever it is, I just have this in my spirit. Whoever it is, they will live and not die. And the power of the Holy Spirit is doing some amazing things. We plead the blood over whoever these individuals are. We plead the blood of Jesus and we declare that you are healed in Jesus mighty name. And the grace gang agree by saying amen and amen. Well, I love you guys. Hey, remember uh, New York City? Listen, dude, we really need to, to, to move everything aside and get to this meeting. It is going to be a breakthrough meeting, uh, and we're expecting God to do just what we did right now. I'm just believing God to heal people. And um, April 26th, we're going to believe God that a move of God will hit New York City and, and, and just stay there. Amen. And that, that 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 we believe in God for that. So um, April 26th, if you haven't registered, go ahead and register now. Thank you for those of you who are registering for Grace Life. We had a registration day at, at the church. And uh, we want to go ahead and get everything registered so we can see what we got, who's coming, so we can make sure we have everything ready to go because we have an idea of how many of you are going to come. Amen. So Grace Life. July 11th through the 13th, if you can do us a favor and register now and uh, go ahead and make that happen. We would love to see you at Grace Life and uh, it is going to be unforgettable in Jesus name. All right. We love you guys. Have an amazing day today. Remember, just spend time with God. Get ready for that rainbow to hit in Jesus name, man. You guys have a great day today and I just believe that all is well. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'll see you tomorrow.